Hey guys, so um, I got something sort of interesting a while ago. Uh, I've already done some tests on it, but I didn't really uh, get a chance to talk about it. Uh, this is called a Lyso Crystal, um, and it's actually a scintillation crystal, which is why I originally got it. Um, it's in this sort of quantity, it's really inexpensive, but um, my plan was to mount it to a blue enhanced uh, pin slash avalanche photodiode and try and make a portable gamma spectrometer out of it because it is uh, um, energy sensitive and it has uh, decent resolution uh, so that would have been interesting but then I found out uh, the L in the Lyso crystal stands for lutetium uh, which is a rare earth element uh, you can see it on the periodic table there element 71 um, and lutetium actually uh, has a relatively high abundance of lutetium-176, uh, about 2.5%, which is um, uh, radioactive, and it has a short enough half-life to uh, actually have a relatively high specific activity, uh, certainly measurable. Um, so I calculated the specific activity of uh, this crystal and found that within uh, this crystal, which is uh, about uh, uh, 5 grams, there'd be about 140 becquerels, or 140 decays per second, uh, of lutetium-176, uh, which should be measurable with the things I have. So one test I did, uh, this is just sort of my chicken scratch from when I did it, is a 30-minute uh, uh, count of my Geiger counter, and I had a net count of 869 counts, or about 30 counts per minute above background, which is pretty good. Uh, and I've already taken a couple spectra. These are each uh, two hours. Uh, and you can see there are some two notable photo peaks, uh, and then some x-ray peaks over here. One is from the lead shielding, one is presumably uh, characteristic of the lutetium, that one there, the 52. Uh, and then there's a, extra, or a gamma peak at about 202 and 307, I think. Uh, I developed a Gaussian curve uh, fitting thing in XL. So yeah, the mean here is about 202 uh, keV, and then here, 300 seven three hundred eight keV and if you we look at the official data um, this is a database of lots of useful gamma spectra uh, we can see the tetium 176 uh, decays well it can decay through electron capture but it doesn't really emit any uh, useful gamma from that it also undergoes uh, negative beta decay into half 176 and this is actually where we get some uh, useful gamma um, through the the coincident with the beta decay, or I should say, um, as a result of the beta decay, we have, uh, as you can see, a gamma being emitted here at 203 or 201.8 uh, kilo electron volts uh, with a probability of about 78%, or in 78% of decays that will occur. And at about 306.7 uh, keV, which occurs in about 93.6% of decays. Uh, so, oops. if we go to back to our spectra that we already took, we can see this uh, peak is actually taller than this one, even though this one is a bit more probable. But that's just because the detector has a higher intrinsic efficiency in this area. Um, and it helps that both of these peaks are in a pretty optimum spot in terms of the uh, detection efficiency of the crystal. If they were higher energy, they'd be a bit harder to de detect because the probability of total attenuation within the scintillation crystal would be much smaller. Uh, so what I thought would be fun uh, is to do another test. The first thing I want to do is a gross counting test with my uh, uh, setup over here with the sodium iodide detector down there. Um, so. What I did, this is just um, basically multi-channel scaling mode, meaning each of these channels is the number of counts that it got uh, for one second. And this is just background for now in my chamber, or the lead castle. Uh, there's an average of, you know, uh, maybe about 25 counts per second. Uh, and I'm going to then put the Letitian crystal in there and run this test again uh, and see if it's uh, noticeably higher, which it should be. Uh, as you know, I already took a spectrum, some measurements, so I know it's radioactive, but this would just be kind of fun. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, I'm going to try doing a 24-hour uh, spectrum 
uh, the other one was two hours. I don't really need 24 hours to see this, but I think it would be interesting to just sort of test the uh, viability of uh, long-term spectra taking uh, with this setup and, you know, with the uh, relative temperature stability and things in this area. Um, so yeah, I'll get on that. Alright, so uh, the count has concluded, um, and this is uh, with the lutetium. This is the background. You can see the lutetium is slightly higher. Um, if I put it on the first segment, or half of memory, you can see this half is with the lutetium, or without the lutetium, and this is with it, uh, and you will note that it is slightly higher. Uh, the, this one second uh, bend size is probably not quite enough to get something that would be considered uh, statistically significant between these two, but you probably wouldn't do that uh, if you're trying to do um, uh, a sensitive count. Um, so anyway, uh, but what you can do uh, is I've selected every channel for uh, an ROI, and I can hit the in area integrate button. There's about 23,000 uh, counts uh, under there in the background, and we switch to our other, do the same thing, there's about 28,000 counts, meaning in 20 uh, minutes we had a gross count of roughly 5,000, uh, give or take, a couple hundred uh, counts. Uh, so this is much more sensitive than uh, to the lutetium than the Geiger counter. Um, so yeah, now I guess I will start the... Um, well, I'll switch this to pulse height uh, mode instead of multi-channel scaling, and then I'll start the 24-hour spectrum. So yeah. Alright, so it has been 24 hours, and uh, we've got pretty good looking spectrum here. Uh, we can see the first photo peak at right around 202 or so. Uh, the second photo peak right around um, 305, 307, and we actually see another photo peak here, uh, around 510. This could be a sum peak from the two, which would make sense, as I'll explain in a couple minutes, or it could just be uh, an annihilation peak from background. So I'm going to subtract a uh, background that I took earlier uh, from this, and uh, we'll see what we get. Alright, so here is our uh, spectrum, our final spectrum, uh, and it looks pretty good. Um, not terribly different from the, the shorter time period, but that's uh, not terribly surprising. Uh, the, the peaks are much cleaner, uh, as you'll notice, which again is expected. Uh, but yeah, everything's in the right spot. We have the 202 roughly uh, peak and the 307 peak. We also have a roughly 54 keV uh, hafnium uh, K-alpha-1 x-ray peak and uh, the roughly 75 keV K alpha one lead peak from the lead castle that the sample was sitting in. Uh, additionally, uh, there's sort of in here you'll notice this peak is kind of broad, especially around the base. Uh, that's actually the um, there's another peak much uh, weaker than here, so um, or much weaker than these two, uh, or less probable I should say, around 88 keV. Um, and that is probably showing up here, and is a good explanation for why uh, the base here is uh, much wider. Uh, so this is the background uh, in orange with the uh, sample spectrum in blue. As you can see, everything lines up pretty well, and that peak we saw there turned out to just be an annihilation peak and not actually a sun peak. So. One thing that's kind of interesting about gamma radiation in general, and this is a, a great demonstration of it, is uh, these peaks that you see are not actually from the lutetium-176 necessarily. They're actually uh, the de-excitation peaks from hafnium-176, which results from the lutetium-176 uh, decaying into hafnium via beta decay. So beta decay is essentially, um, if you think of a neutron, it's essentially a proton that contains an electron. So when uh, a nucleus undergoes beta decay, uh, one of the neutrons is actually emitting an electron and also an antineutrino, um, but we can't detect that. Uh, and when it does so, it uh, becomes a proton and thus transmutes into the element that is uh, one higher on the periodic table, in this case hafnium. Uh, but that process often leaves the nucleus uh, very excited, uh, and as... Uh, 
much like uh, actually the electron shells, uh, if you've ever seen gas discharge tubes, you're exciting the electrons into states higher than the ground state, and as uh, the electrons relax back to their ground state, they emit visible light. Well, the nucleus is not all that different, there are even uh, shells and structures similar to those, that of uh, electrons. So as this excited hafnium nucleus uh, relaxes back to its ground state, um, it will actually emit characteristic uh, photons. In this case, it's much higher energy than the electrons, you know, on the order of keV and MeV, as opposed to um, just electron volts that you get from uh, the electronic di uh, transitions. So uh, if we look at the nuclear data that we have for everything, um, so this was the decay data for lutetium-176, and you'll see these photo peaks here. Um, if we go to a list of the excitation energies for uh, hafnium-176, you'll see they are actually identical to the first four uh, excitation uh, levels or excited states of hafnium-176. So uh, it is safe to conclude, based on this spectrum, that in fact uh, we are seeing uh, the relaxation of excited states of hafnium-176 uh, as the result of the transmutation of lutetium-176 as it undergoes beta decay, uh, which is pretty interesting. Um, one thing that I was sort of expecting to see is actually a um, some peak of either all three of the photo peaks, the 88, 202, and 307, or at least these two, sort of in the 500 to 600 area, uh, because uh, what actually ends up happening is the beta decay will go to either the uh, fourth or the third excited state of hafnium-176, and then this photo peak will actually uh, come from the decay uh, from the fourth excited state to the third excited state, or, well, one excited state to another excited state, uh, and then so on. So they should actually be coincident, uh, but we didn't actually end up seeing that, so that's kind of interesting, but uh, yeah, so... Anyway, just thought that was pretty interesting.